I actually wasn't planning on making a video just yet. I'm actually working on a few other things. But something came up and I think we should have a bit of a chat about it. And that is to do with Slam Dunk Festival. Now, if you've seen our vlog from Slam Dunk Festival 2023 earlier this year, you'll know that we didn't exactly have the best of times and a lot of people said the same thing. Some people had a great time and I'm not here to take anything away from those people. Um, but Slam Dunk themselves have asked for feedback and they've spent the last few months reviewing that feedback and seeing how they can improve and looking for what actually went wrong on the day, not just at North, but at South as well. And they've issued a full statement to address some of the issues that people had um, and how they can do better next year. So we're just going to read through some of the report that they've issued and I'll link it down below as well if you want to read through it yourselves. I do think there are some very valid points, some things I do have a bit of an issue with still, but overall I think um, we deserve to hear them out, hear what they have to say. I'll just read through it and then we'll stop as we go. The report into the events of Slam Dunk Festival 2023. Thank you for giving us the time to fully investigate the events of Slam Dunk Festival 2023. We have taken that time to work with our internal team and many external partners, firstly to work out why things went wrong and then find solutions and improvements for next year. Please let us be clear that we are not trying to pass the blame of anything to other people. We are simply telling the truth about what caused those issues so you can be assured that we have identified the problem and therefore are able to fix it. We would like to stress that we take full accountability of everything that happened on the day and we are so sorry that some people didn't have the experience that they should have. We hope you give us the chance to change that. Please believe us when we say we are all deeply personally affected by what happened. After working so hard on this event for over a year in advance, to see how unhappy some people were was distressing for us. Slam Dunk is a small independent company and the end result you see is produced by so many different companies we bring in to help us run it but we accept the book stops here. Those of you that have been coming for many years know that we've had issues before, and when they've happened, we have a good record of improving them for the next year. We rely on your continued feedback in order for us to improve the event year on year, and we would like to thank you for your ongoing support. We are confident that with these new measures, we will be able to resolve all issues and hopefully assure all our attendees that we can deliver a much better Slam Dunk Festival experience in 2024. As much as we'd have liked to respond sooner, as we are sure you will have hoped, we have needed input from many different people to help us both investigate and solve the issues. So that's a basic just introduction to uh, the actual fact that they acknowledge that things went wrong. They acknowledge that it wasn't a great experience for a lot of people. And fair play, you know, uh, straight away, they did hold their hands up and they said, you know, if you've got any issues, put, put it in writing and we can review it. And they, the reason it's taken this long for them to address it really in a, in a formal statement is because that many people complained. I mean, we are, what, we're in September now. That was May. That's nearly four months of reviewing the situation, reviewing complaints, reviewing you know, everything that went on. Um, that's a lot of work and that's a lot of time and effort been put in. So before we really dive into things, we do need to acknowledge that the Slam Dunk team are human beings. They make mistakes. And whatever happened over that weekend is not the fault of one person. Um, nobody deserves to be hounded off the internet or or receive any kind of you know, abuse um, or nastiness, we can we can all discuss this in a very civil manner. So let's get into a bit of the details then. So they start, they say, we can confirm we did not oversell Slam Dunk Festival 2023. The two festival sites have always been designed to hold 30,000 people each. We had just never reached that number of attendees before. We worked closely with Hatfield Park, Temple Newsom Park, Hertfordshire Council and Leeds City Council to ensure that all health and safety measures are met and that we can deliver a safe event for everyone. All our event management plans are submitted to a local authority group containing members of licensing, various council departments and the emergency services before we proceed with the event. If we had sold over our license capacity, we would risk our license for future years, which is something we would never want to do under any circumstances. Now that's fair enough. When the event happened, I am fairly certain that I thought someone said 
the capacity of Temple Newsome in Leeds was 23,000. I'm fairly sure I read an article or something, but I can't find that article to back up that. Um, so please don't take that as, as gospel. But something I did find, and I will put the link to this in the description down below, and I'll put it on screen right now so that you can see it, is a company called LFX Events. Now, they say on their website, the client name Slam Dunk Events Limited, project name Slam Dunk Festival. Both sites consisted of two main stages, big tops and trailer stages, holding an overall capacity of 28,000 per site. This is the brief for this year's festival. And there it is in writing. Both sites holding an overall capacity of 28,000 per site, which obviously is 2,000 less than what Slam Dunk are claiming. Um, and this is the security company saying that. This, they provide the site and event management, production management, site design, um, specifications, and liaisons with authorities and things like that. So if the security company is saying the capacity is 28,000, and the festival is saying that the capacity is 30,000. This is what, why we need a bit of clarification, because if we're getting two different numbers from, from different sources, um, this is what leads to people jumping to conclusions and saying, it, you know, it was oversold, it was, it was dangerous and stuff like that. So to release two different numbers, um, and I, I get that Slam Dunk have their facts and figures, but the security company that worked for Slam Dunk have their facts and figures and if they don't line up then that needs to be addressed somewhere but they are right in what they say in that if they are found to have breached any of those security issues um, or oversold the license capacity that's it that's it for the festival and nobody on that team wants to run the risk of doing that on the day at north no i, I can't comment on south because we we didn't go but at north Something didn't feel right on the day, and I'm wondering if that extra 2,000 people might be the case, if the security had only prepared for 28,000 and Slam Dunk had been told 30,000. We can't have this discussion until that number is clarified by both parties because this, this is what leads to the hearsay. The next issue they come on to is the food vendors. We have worked with the same food concession provider for a long time and prior to the event we were assured that the amount of food vendors they had booked in was sufficient for the amount of people we were expecting. So to them they were expecting 30,000 people and they thought that the amount of food vendors that they had been provided with were sufficient for those 30,000 people. Unfortunately this was not the case and the units that were there could not cope with the demand at peak times. It wasn't just peak times, it was it was the entire day. Um, there was one peak time, which was lunchtime, and then it just carried on throughout the day. And then by the time that peak time had gone, it was it it was because there was no food left. That was the only reason that the queues went down is because the, all the vendors had run out of food. Also in North, the way they were so concentrated in one area made queuing and getting past those queues very difficult. Definitely, absolutely, it's it's one thing to have not enough vendors it's another thing for those vendors not to prepare and have the stock levels ready that layout was dangerous now i don't care what anybody says about numbers or whether it was oversold or not trying to get through that little alleyway was dangerous it was dangerous you didn't know what queue you were supposed to be in for what vendor there were people trying to get from the bottom of the hill up towards the key club stage. There was people trying to go back down the other way. It was just a free-for-all and nobody had a clue what was going on and it was dangerous. And they're very lucky that somebody didn't get hurt. So they've said, changes for next year. After an extensive debrief with our concession management company, they have agreed to supply us with a higher number of vendors based on the event's attendance. They will be working closely with the site team to ensure they are better distributed throughout the site. We will also be aiming to publish all menus and locations of traders well in advance of the event so that you can make informed decisions on what to eat and where to eat during your busy festival day. Now that shows signs of promise because yeah, they've listened to people, they've said, okay, we've heard that, you know, it, it wasn't just the the queues were taking forever, it was it was on us. We've we mismanaged the layout. We need to work with the people that we work with. We need to speak to the companies that we work with to uh, create a better system, to spread things out a bit more. 
just making sure that all those companies are on the same page is going to be a massive help for next year. The next big issue that they wanted to address is the toilets and water points. We always go well above and beyond the suggested numbers for toilet requirements for events in line with industry guidelines. We can assure you that there were more toilets this year than there have ever been. All I'll say is that clip of Izzy in the vlog when she says she's been waiting in the queue for what 45 minutes an hour and nearly wet herself waiting for the toilet. Me and Alana had access wristbands and the queue for the access toilet was half an hour. Now that's dangerous. That's not very accessible. Okay, they can say, well, we had more toilets than we normally have. We've had more toilets than we've ever had before. If, if you've got 30,000 people going, that's not enough. But by the sounds of it, it, it is something that they've recognized again. However, with the additional people and due to how they were distributed throughout the site, some blocks were very busy and couldn't cope with the numbers whilst other blocks were much quieter. Now, I don't think that's necessarily fair to say that it's... That almost feels like it's it's shunning the blame onto the people that went and going, well, there was toilets at the other end of the site. Why didn't you just walk down there? No, the, the, the toilets right by the entrance to the site were rammed. The toilets at the very far end of the site by the Amazon stage where Enter Shikari played were absolutely rammed. Every block of toilets that I saw was busy every single time I walked past them. And I get it's a festival and toilets, you know, yeah, fair enough. But to have hour-long queues at every single toilet block throughout the day, that's that's not just, well, why didn't you try and go to the other one? That's we need to have more toilets available for people. Again, so the changes they've gone for for next year. Next year, we will have at least 25% extra toilets above the industry guidance based on the number of attendees. We are also exploring better ways of distributing them across the sites. Good signs of progress if they can pull it off. The The idea of having 25% more than what they need um, will obviously cost the festival more money but we'll avoid things like this in the future. Now, I'm not going to speak too much on the car parking issues because we got the shuttle bus to and from site. So I don't really have any first-hand experience of all the car parking issues. I am aware of all the horror stories at both North and South. Um, North in particular, that I heard stories, people saying that they were parked up in a field where they were told to go. Um, they were told it was all safe. And then by the end of the day, the car parking sign had been removed from the field that they were in and the council had come along and slapped a £250 fine on some cars because the sign hadn't been there to say that they were legally parked for the festival camping, uh, for the festival parking, sorry. And if that's the case, then who moved the signs? It doesn't matter what improvements you make to the, the in and out of the car park, to the traffic flow and whatever. If if you've got people moving signs and people park somewhere where they're told is legal to park, go and enjoy the festival and then at the end of the day come back to find their car is now illegally parked without their knowledge or consent. Um, that needs to be addressed as well. But the changes for next year, they've said, next year we are implementing a strict limit on the amount of car parking tickets being sold. These will only be available to purchase prior to the event. The car parking passes will be physical and sent to you via post as they will need to be clearly displayed on your windshield, meaning that we can check tickets without stopping vehicles. They will have detailed instructions printed on them for you to follow the correct route to access the car parks, which is great. So yeah, if you, if you do want to go car parking, then there will be a limited number based on the amount of space that they have at the site, which is ba basic event management anyway, to be honest. The fact that people were allowed to turn up and pay on the day this year is quite frankly a bit silly. But there is car parking available in the city centre and then a shuttle bus to and from the site. So yeah, if, if worse comes to the absolute worst, they have catered for, for people in that situation. But by putting a stop on the number of car parking spaces available, then we won't run into those issues of four hours trying to get into the site again. To finish off, they go on to say then, we are confident in these changes and updates and hope that they will reassure you in returning to Slam Dunk Festival. We've also been working very hard on getting the first lineup announcement to you, which we can confirm will be with you within the next few weeks. There will be a limited time discount for everyone that attended the festival this year and affected by the issues we have addressed today. We truly hope to see you all next year. We are sorry we will do better, Team Slam Dunk. That to me is a good sign 
Um, like I said earlier in this video, I don't want this to be, you know, having a go at the slam dunk team. Admittedly, I, I kind of got caught up in the, the frustration of things when, when the festival first happened, but that was because I spent £100 on the ticket. And so if you spend that amount of money, you expect the event to be organized. We'll get to that in a different video because me me and a few other people are going to sit down and do like a, a bit of a festival recap video. So we'll talk more about those issues that we had in that video. The idea of giving people a discount on next year's ticket is a really good one to bring people back. I was speaking about this to somebody a few days ago about whether we're actually going to go back next year or not. And somebody said, if there's problems with an event once, then that's a problem. If it happens twice, that's a pattern. If it's a good lineup, then we might give them the benefit of the doubt and just say, okay, well, we had issues last year. You've understood the issues and you've committed to addressing those issues and organizing things better this year. So next year's festival could be absolutely incredible. They, you know, I mean, this year was a sold out event. So that means they've got the money there to go and get a Fallout Boy as headliner or something silly like that, you know. So if if they do that and they invest the money and obviously they're getting 25% more more toilets um, and more food vendors, so they are reinvesting that money in the facilities available on the site, we can't see the improvements if we don't go. And even though in the, in the vlog I said that that was going to be my last ever slam dunk, that was kind of me caught up in the frustration and and kind of jumping the gun a little bit. Having had four months to kind of sit on it and, and mull it over, and especially after reading through through the statement, um, I might go again next year, again, depending on the lineup. P people make mistakes. Companies make mistakes. Organizations make mistakes. It's not about the mistakes they make. It's how they address them and how they learn from them and develop and grow from those mistakes. I love Slam Dunk. That This year was my third one. And yeah, okay, there was issues. But before that, I had two great festivals uh, in 2021 and 2022. And I thought, yeah, this is something that I'm going to come to every single year. I don't believe that any of the mistakes were made in any sort of malice or or in any sort of greed. Having read through this and having had some time to mull over the weekend and watch the video back the bits that were fun the bands were incredible this year enter shikari headlining the offspring had never seen before flogging molly had never seen before billy talent kids in glass houses and if they can do the same next year and get some really good bands maybe get like a big name like i said before like a like a fallout boy or or a paramore maybe somebody like that then it would be really hard to say no to that and i think um after the, dis the disappointment of people this year having now this like positive thing of yep we're going to do better we've ad we've addressed the issues we're going to do better we're going to make next year really really good to to bring out a headliner and obviously when that comes out in a few weeks we'll know um but to bring out a massive headliner like that would be would be really hard to say no to i do want to say thank you to the slam dunk team for releasing this report and releasing this statement um, for genuinely listening to people's concerns because it, it would be so easy for a, a festival to just go, no, nope, we did everything right. We did right with the industry standards. Um, we did our part. It's not our fault if you didn't enjoy it, whatever. But to come out and say, no, no, yeah, there were, there were genuine issues. People have legitimate concerns and those concerns are valid. And we commit ourselves to doing better next, next time around. That should be commended. And if you're one of these people that has been given any of the organizers or any of the staff abuse online, have a word with yourself. It's it's not the act of any one person, and it's certainly not done with any intent or, or nastiness. So let's just wait and see about the lineup for next year. Let's wait and see all the improvements they've made to the organization and everything else. And hopefully next year's festival will be a great one. So that's everything for today. I will leave a link to the report in the description down below if you want to go and read it for yourself. Let me know what you think about it because I know some people were affected in different ways to the way we were. Um, some people had a great time. Some people had an even worse time than we did. 
how do, how do you feel about this report? How do you feel? Do you feel they, they've done enough? Do you feel they're not doing enough? Let me know down below. Like I said, we will be doing a full summer festival recap soon. So if you'd like to stick around for that, then subscribe down below. Let me know if there's anything else you want me to talk about, festival news, anything like that. Uh, obviously, when lineups get released, we will be doing an overview and, and things like that. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And as always, I will see you in the next one.